The rotator cuff is one of the most commonly injured parts of the shoulder, but not every rotator cuff tear is the same, and not every patient with a rotator cuff tear needs the same treatment. In this video, we will tackle this common problem and how I treat it in order from small, medium, to large, and to massive. And by the way, the options get more and more interesting as the tear size grows. Welcome back to the Shoulder and Arm Health channel where we discuss the latest and best in shoulder and arm care. I'm Dr. Roger Sohn, a board certified orthopedic surgeon. As a brief anatomy review, the rotator cuff is made up of four muscles that are often the unsung heroes of shoulder mechanics. Big show muscles like the pecs and deltoids get a lot of attention in the gym, but these deeper muscles are often ignored. The rotator cuff functions to suck the ball of the humerus into the concavity of the socket while the deltoid pulls the arm upward. Without this balancing force, the shoulder can become very painful and weak when you start to raise the arm. The first 120 degrees of elevation can be painful with rotator cuff tears and has been dubbed the painful arc. Above the rotator cuff, you see the roof of the shoulder known as the acromion process. This is an important attachment point for the deltoid muscle. It can also become a source of problems if bad shoulder mechanics lead to rubbing of the rotator cuff tendon on the bottom of the acromion. So let's start off with the least severe type of rotator cuff issue called impingement or tendonitis. This is the first stage of rotator cuff damage and it is reversible. Due to mechanical contact between the rotator cuff and the roof, the acromion we just discussed, the tendon can get inflamed and swollen. Patients often exhibit the painful arc I discussed previously. Most people have no history of an injury but instead have a gradual onset of pain usually associated with some type of exercise or sports. The pain is usually right here and can radiate downward. This outward motion really aggravates the pain. Many if not most of the people who see me are at this stage. A period of rest followed by a course of physical therapy can often restore the normal mechanics of the shoulder and get rid of the pain permanently. So if you're lucky, you will still be in this stage and you'll make a fairly quick recovery. The next stage is a bit worse. This is called a partial thickness rotator cuff tear. It is usually caused by impingement, which we just discussed. If you don't stop and rest and fix the bad mechanics, this will lead over time to the damage of the tendon fibers. At first, the damage can be quite mild and amenable to rest or physical therapy. However, as the damage accumulates, the tendon can become quite weak and painful with activities. It often hurts to raise the arm, especially while holding any sort of weight. Early stages like less than 20% thickness damage, as seen on an imaging study like an MRI, can be amenable to treatments like orthobiologic injections. As the damage gets worse, however, it can be difficult to fix the problem with just physical therapy and injections. In many cases, an arthroscopic surgery can be very helpful. We can usually get good results using a collagen augmentation patch to thicken the damaged tendon. In general, results are quite good and MRI studies show we can thicken the tendon by about two millimeters using the patch. And that brings us to full thickness rotator cuff tears. I commonly see people at this stage, either as a result of continued gradual weakening of the tendon or sometimes due to a sudden injury, the tendon can fully tear. This is usually a very painful condition, but in some cases, the pain may have been worsening for so long, the patient may not know the exact moment where the tendon fully tore. We can usually detect a full rotator cuff tear on an examination where someone struggles to raise the arm actively. They often have to do a trick movement to get the arm up in a certain direction. And on the way back down, the arm can drop as well as it enters that painful arc we discussed earlier. An MRI can confirm the diagnosis. Unfortunately, these tears do not heal on their own. The gap between the tendon and the bone prevent the tendon from healing to its target. Although this type of rotator cuff tear can cause significant symptoms, it is also the simplest for me to repair. This is accomplished with an arthroscopic technique. That is where we put a small fiber optic camera in the joint and then I use suture anchors to sew the tendon back down to the bone. Over the course of about 12 weeks, the tendon connects to the bone again and the strength of the shoulder can be restored. Now I should mention here that not everyone needs to have their rotator cuff tear fixed. In fact, that is the whole topic of this video. Studies have shown that people who choose not to have their tendon fixed can often rehabilitate their shoulder with physical therapy alone. However, about 30% of people who try to avoid surgery still have significant symptoms and later opt to have the surgery. For those who choose to go the non-operative route, studies suggest that there is about a two to three year window of opportunity where you can still change your mind later and have the tendon successfully repaired. If you would like to try some self-directed physical therapy, Check out these videos by my friend and colleague, Grant Frost, also known as your wellness nerd. In most cases, physical therapy can only help. If it isn't giving the desired results, you can always try surgical options later. 
And finally, there is the massive retracted irreparable rotator cuff tear. There are two elements to this type of rotator cuff tear. One is the size. As time passes, rotator cuff tears tend to get bigger in size. Secondly, there is the repairability of the tear. This is the most important issue, and it has the most to do with the length of time the tear has been there. Without any significant resistance on the torn tendons, the muscles can retract inward. As time passes, the muscles lose their bulk and strength from lack of use. This is called atrophy. The muscles also lose their elasticity and become scarred in a shortened position. And this is the main reason we can't repair these. The tendon just can't be stretched back to the original position. In these cases, we have the most choices though. One option is just to repair part of the tendon and bridge any remaining gaps with a dermal allograft. That sort of tissue comes from a tissue bank from a human donor. This process is called a superior capsule reconstruction and studies have shown good results with this type of repair. However, in cases where no part of the original rotator cuff can be repaired, external rotation strength can be limited. There are also tear patterns where this type of reconstruction won't work, specifically when the front tendon called the subscapularis tendon is torn the superior's capsular reconstruction is not a good choice. Another option in those who want to regain more external rotation strength is called a tendon transfer. This option uses a redundant or extra muscle on the back called the lower trapezius muscle to power the shoulder. This tendon transfer also requires donor tendon tissue and it also requires two months in a special brace called an external rotation brace. These types of surgery require over five months to fully recover, but to those who want to regain strength, especially in external rotation, they can be worth the time and effort investment. In some cases, due to joint damage, we may choose to simply replace the shoulder with an artificial joint called the reverse shoulder replacement. This type of implant makes the rotator cuff essentially unneeded. The mechanics of the new joint give the large deltoid muscle all the leverage it needs to power the shoulder in an upward direction. This surgery is more invasive than the other arthroscopic options though. There are a few more risks as well. However, the recovery is generally faster than a rotator cuff repair or superior capsule reconstruction. Patient rated outcomes are excellent with this surgery and my patients recover sooner with this as opposed to a superior capsule reconstruction or a tendon transfer. I've covered this topic in another video and I'll put links below. And speaking of recovering sooner, the final option is meant to give you the fastest recovery from surgery. This option is called the balloon spacer. The balloon spacer is a device that is placed above the humeral head which pushes the high riding humerus back down into its normal position. This gets rid of any rubbing or grinding of the ball on the roof of the shoulder. It is often a good choice for someone who mainly wants to get rid of the pain and wants a quick recovery period without significant restrictions. However, while it gives the fastest recovery, it doesn't restore as much strength as the other options I just discussed. I've covered this topic in detail recently. See the video links below. So to summarize, impingement is reversible with rest and retraining of the muscles. For those with a small partial tear, cell-based orthobiologic injections can give relief. For larger tears, a collagen augmentation patch is a great option as well. For full thickness tears, an arthroscopic rotator cuff repair is usually called for, although some people opt out of surgery and try physical therapy instead. For massive irreparable tears, a partial repair with a superior capsule reconstruction or a tendon transfer can restore strength and get rid of the pain. And for those with a large tear along with joint damage, a reverse shoulder replacement is often called for. And finally, for those who simply want the pain to be gone, a balloon spacer may offer the quickest recovery with the least amount of restrictions. Which of these topics do you have questions about? Please leave me a comment and I'll do my best to respond quickly. Don't forget to share and like so others can benefit. And if this content is helpful, please consider subscribing to the channel. Take good care of your shoulders and I'll see you in the next video.